Everyone, it's Ross. In today's video, I want to give you guys my objectives for the 2019 growing season. We're getting actually some main crop coming in now, so I want to be very specific before we get into all that, what it is that my objectives are. You know, everybody has a certain goal in mind of what they want to accomplish, or I think we should have a goal in mind of what we want to accomplish. You know, some of you guys may be quite new to this, and you may want to just have your trees grow, right? That may be your only objective. Maybe it's to try your first fig. Maybe, um, you know, if you have many varieties like I do, maybe it's to try as many varieties as humanly possible. That is certainly one of my objectives here. And I want to get into really good specifics of what it is that I'm trying to accomplish. So again, I have a lot of varieties here, guys, on the patio, in the ground now as well. And, you know, they're all so different. They all have different characteristics. They all taste different. My objective from almost the very beginning was to find something that does really well here. Find the varieties that I really, really like. And if I have over 200 varieties, guys, it's really important to keep track of things. So I created these tags, and we talked about this earlier in the season. We talked about it in the wintertime. These are vinyl blinds that you can cut up. They last in the you know, conditions outside. And also the pencil doesn't wear off, believe it or not. And I've written on here the variety name, the date the tree woke up. And then we have different categories here for different things, things that I'm liking to keep track of so I can help quantify data to then develop a better understanding of these varieties and which ones I really would like to keep for the future. You know, things like vigor, things like how productive they are, things like the flavor, things like the hang time. We've talked a lot about this. So for me, tasting a lot of these varieties, maybe some I haven't tasted just yet, getting all of these to fruit, at least one fruit. You know, that's obviously the objective, I think, with a lot of you guys is to at least get one fruit off of these trees. Some of them just refuse to fruit, you know, and We've talked a lot about that and why that can happen. Things like our trees are just too vigorous. Maybe we prune them too hard. Um, the sap flow is too strong. So, you know, there's obviously some obstacles to, obstacles to that, but to be honest with you, I think the majority of my figs here are indeed going to fruit. I do have some that appear to be dropping as well. That was one big issue. You know, how many of these figs are actually Smyrna's? How many of them require pollination from the Blastophaga? You know, there's one over here called Frigola nera. There's one over there called Plint Nero. We have some others over here that appear to be dropping. And, you know, it's a big question if indeed these figs are indeed common that will ripen here without pollination. Um, so, you know, that's another objective. Another objective of mine is to also get the highest quality of fruit possible. And the way that I can do that, we've talked a lot about that, but getting them really early, the earliest possible, even if I have to sacrifice a few fruits here and there, like this particular branch doesn't have any fruit on it, right? Or if it does, it's coming in quite late. So by the time this ripens, we're gonna be in a point in my season that it's just too cold. The daylight hours are shortening. Um, there's a lot of rain. So we're not gonna get the quality that we want. But if I can get these figs right here, as an example, to ripen by, let's say, August 15th, you know, that's amazing. If I can get all my figs to ripen here before about September 15th, the quality just is better and better. In fact, even right now, if I can get them to ripen in July, things are really starting to be significantly higher quality and also have better flavor. Like this one back in here, this Paradiso fig is actually starting to swell. We're still only in July. That's really good to see. Um, you know, so that's been my objective is to get them earlier, which then translates over to higher quality. Another way of getting higher quality is being patient, letting our figs be picked at the right time. Also not feeding them as much nitrogen. If we give them too much nitrogen, right? There's that nice balance that we need to achieve. We're going to have too much cracking in the skin that's going to expose the pulp to the outside elements. And that's really not good for the quality. Also the water, we've really been trying to control the water. Since these figs have formed, we have really started to slow down and lower the amount of water that these figs are getting. 
Um, another way to do that is actually to cover the tops of the pot. This is something that I'm gonna do. I think I'm almost 100% sure that this is going to work and that I'm, I'm actually gonna try it, is that we're gonna put these really thick black trash bags over a number of my trees and see if we can help control the water that way late in the season when things are cooler, more rainy, more humid. Um, we're certainly gonna be covering these pots with those and see if that helps with splitting, see if that helps with the rain resistance in any way, which of course then translates to the quality. So I think that's really the biggest objective in terms of my potted figs, but if I bring you guys over to the in-ground trees, this is a totally different story. And the in-ground trees, I kind of want them to just get established. You know, if they can fruit, that's awesome. If not, it's not the end of the world. But what I do want them to do is not to grow too vigorously. I want this to be really warm. I want the growth around now to start slowing down even though it looks like it's actually starting to kick up. But getting that slower growth is going to have our wood lignified up by the time our frost comes in. So that's really the objective is to get kind of as much growth as possible without having too much growth, if that makes any sense. Um, you know, some of these again are just gonna be chopped all the way down to the base. And that is sort of the objective with some of these. So like things like my Black Meteor KK, if we can get as much growth out of this as possible, we kind of just are getting as many cuttings as possible to then be able to sell. So that's one method or one kind of way of thinking about this. You know, it is putting out a ton of fruit. I mean, look how ridiculous that is right there. That's an insane photo for this video, by the way. But, um, you know, that's different objectives for different things, right? So getting the growth, getting these guys established, not watering them, you know, trying to slow down that vigor, not, for, not feeding them at all. Uh, maybe some of these really small ones we can think about feeding, but coming in here and then chopping them all down to the base, covering them with a tarp, you know, that's our winter protection method. So thinking about our objectives has to be included in the winter protection method. We have to be thinking about the winter. We have to be kind of uh, thinking about that in the back of our minds. Another objective, I guess, with our potted trees is that some of them are just too big, right? They're not gonna fit in storage, so we're gonna have to cut them back, right? We're gonna have to get that branching lower. Um, we're gonna have to get things forming lower. So, you know, in a tree like this, which is almost as tall as me, you really wanna make sure that this thing is just not getting too much bigger. And if it is, then we come in here and we prune this back just ever so slightly for next year. Now, if I bring you guys over to some of the other in-ground trees, I wanted to show you the ones actually in the greenhouse because we have totally different objectives in the greenhouse because they're protected from the cold. They don't have that same issue with the cold because this thing's gonna be kept above 32 degrees Fahrenheit all winter time. But if you come in here and you look at these trees, we just planted them and the whole idea with them is to train them as a Japanese espalier. So my whole goal with these is to actually get them to grow as much as possible. Here we have a capra fig, right? What's the goal with this? The goal with the capra fig is to get this to grow, get this to set fruit, and then hopefully next year I can get myself some profici in the spring flown in from California, we can then put the profici around the capra fig and then the wasp, the blastophaga in the profici can then get inside some of these figs and we can then colonize the wasp here in the greenhouse. So it's all about growth here. I don't mind feeding these. I don't mean, I don't mind watering these because I want these trees to establish themselves quicker. If I can get them to establish quicker, I will because if we have too much vigor in the ground outside, Again, that cold is gonna come in and really hurt these trees in let's say November, in the late fall when we start to have that early frost that comes in that's just way too extreme. The trees aren't even dormant at that point. Whereas these are not gonna get hit with that at all, right? I can have these guys continue to grow probably sometime into January, which is actually probably not gonna be ideal, but you know, it is what it is. Um, so again, different objectives for different things. When it comes to 
my in-ground trees, right? We're training them in different ways. We're letting, as an example, my Ron de Bardot was killed all the way down to the base. And now it's just going through this process of re-sprouting from the base, regrowing. And you can see I've limited the number of trunks. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Seven is actually probably one too many. In fact, you wanna limit the number of trunks because then you're gonna get fewer, thicker branches to then survive the cold potentially better. So it's all about what you guys are thinking about and what it is that you guys, your situation is. You know, that's obviously the big goal. Another big goal of mine and objective this year is to protect our fruits. We don't want anything getting these fruits, whether that's a critter, an animal. We don't want anyone, anything learning that these fruits exist and especially the SWD. And if I bring you guys over to this part of the yard, the SWD is a fruit fly that's attracted to fermenting fruit. And if you have any figs that are in the rain, they start to ferment, they start to spoil. And out of nowhere comes in the SWD. And you can see up in this tree, by the way, guys, I'm gonna zoom in for you, is that this is my black cherry tree. And my black cherry tree, believe it or not, has all these little cherries on it and they're not in the craziest number but if you look at how big this tree is it's in crazy numbers and it covers a huge area this tree so there's a ton of fruit on these that nothing eats nothing bothers the fruit and it's all going to drop to the ground very soon and it's going to cover a huge area and my objective is gonna to be to try to get up as many of these fruits before they start to ferment and bring in the SWD. Last year we had some SWD and what I had to do was set up traps. And I think that's what we're gonna to have to do in the future is get those traps set up, ready to go. Because inevitably in my area, it seems like, you know, probably for the inevitable future, we're gonna have SWD fruit fly, fruit, fruit fly problems, excuse me guys. Um, and that's about it, you know, it's all about collecting the data as accurately as we can, doing really good assessments on the flavor, getting a whole idea of what every single one of these figs can do and what it's producing and, you know, that way we can make big judgment calls because at the end of my season, believe it or not, at the end of this season, we're gonna be getting rid of a lot of these varieties, a lot of these potted trees. I want this entire row of figs gone. So this, this entire row right here, we have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Let's see, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. We have about, oh, we can say nine. So we have about 18 pots of these 15 gallon size pots that I wanna completely get rid of next year. And that's all in an effort to then make room for the varieties that I value the most, the varieties that we are now growing for production purposes, getting these small young trees of varieties that we highly respect and highly value to a larger size to then eventually be in a pot like that big next year. And I would really appreciate having less of these pots. I mean, there's just too many figs, right? But also now we're not really butchering our trees. We've come to the conclusion of, all right, well, this fig does really well, or this fig doesn't do well, or whatever it is. And then that way we leave those trees alone. We don't mess with them. We don't prune them as much. We don't um, graft onto them. We don't put them in the same pot as another fig, right? I have two different trees, if you can see this two different trees in the same pot. So it's, it's getting a bit complex and complicated back here, but you know, I've enjoyed this process so far, but from this point on, I wanna be focusing on production. I wanna be getting more figs from less pots in larger pots and uh, you know, make my efforts more, seem more worth it at least in the short term. So anyway, guys, that is the objectives of 2019. I hopefully you guys enjoyed this one. Um, I really do think that this is something you guys should think about, especially if you're a serious collector like I am, what it is that your objective is with any of these trees, regardless if it's figs, if it's pomegranates, jujubes, 
the cherry trees, the stone fruits, the apples, the pears, what it is that you're trying to achieve. And that way you should be able to plan from there. Planning is so key. All right, guys. Again, I wanna thank you all for watching. If you enjoyed this one, subscribe. Like the video and share it also with somebody who you know might be interested in growing figs. As I said earlier in the video, we are gonna be trying so many varieties of main crop that I wanna share with you guys, especially the varieties that are potentially really, really good. We may skip out on some of the ones that are not as good, um, but it is good to know for some of you guys. And if you wanna know, the varieties that are not good just check out the spreadsheet down in the description below all of that all the varieties all the data that i'm collecting is going to go into that spreadsheet and that way you guys can have this data for yourself and can make you know better judgments on what it is that you guys want to have or grow in the future so again thank you guys for watching we'll catch you all soon and see you for tomorrow's video take care everyone